I am in Utica, Illinois at Starved Rock State Park. This is among the greatest state parks in the state of Illinois and even in the entire country. So I'm very excited to explore this beautiful and historic park right on the Illinois River. Starved Rock State Park's infrastructure was largely built by the Civilian Conservation Corps during the New Deal. That program hired thousands of out-of-work young men to build infrastructure at America's parks. Here's a sign for the Civilian Conservation Corps' Camp LaSalle, where the workers had their barracks and camp. So we're going to start off at the Visitor Center, which has some displays on the history of Starved Rock. Here's a topographical map of the park. It has a very different geography from the rest of the flat state. I'm definitely not going to see everything. I'm over here by the Starved Rock, but I am going to eventually make my way over here to St. Louis Canyon. These are some pelts and skulls of local critters. There's also a fish tank. These are excavated relics spanning thousands of years of human habitation here. Basically, a melting glacier flooded this area and left behind all the exposed rock canyons. There's some Paleo-Indian artifacts. They hunted mammoths. There's a replica mammoth tooth as well. This is a wigwam, the traditional style of home built by Illinois tribes. During the 1600s, the Jesuit father Jacques Marquette was sent to Catholicize the native peoples. Of course, the more profitable reason for the French being here was fur trading. Beaver pelts were highly sought after for hats and other things, so they'd be hunted down here and sent back to Europe. The reason the Starved Rock is so important is because a French fort was built atop it. This is a miniature diorama of Fort St. Louis, which stood atop Starved Rock from 1682 to 1691. In this scene, the fort is being sieged by Native Americans. The fort was besieged by 200 Iroquois warriors in 1684. The Iroquois from New York did ally with the British governor there, so they came over and sieged Fort St. Louis for eight days. They took a lot of Shawnee who were allied with a French prisoner, but their efforts were unsuccessful. Robert Cavalier de La Salle and his partner Henry de Tonti established the fort, intending it to be a base of operations for full-scale French settlement of the region. As mentioned, the Civilian Conservation Corps developed this park. The men were paid $30 a month for a lot of hard labor, and about three-fourths of that went back to their families, but at least it was steady work. That's a taxidermy bison mount. Here's a case full of taxidermy animals, examples of the wildlife here at Starved Rock. There are some snowy owls here. That's a flying squirrel. I want to see one of those. This is Charlie the Great Horned Owl. He was born with a birth defect so he couldn't fly. Here are some excavated artifacts from the Newell site which was where a French fort was built after Fort St. Louis was abandoned. This is the barrel of a French trade gun. Those are some Jesuit rings. They were traded by the French and were highly desired among the Native Americans for some reason. This is a slice from the Great American Elm. It was one of the largest American elms in the state at 85 feet tall. The rings show various years in history and that bullet was shot into it during the 1880s. There's also a cigar store Indian. And apparently Bigfoot might be lurking here at Starved Rock. The Starved Rock is a National Historic Landmark. There's also a Grand Army of the Republic monument here, honoring Union veterans of the Civil War with a likeness of Abraham Lincoln. That's a sculpture of an eagle. All right, now I'm gonna hike up to the Starved Rock. This monument honors Fort St. Louis.
The rock is clearly grown over, and there's no visible remains to indicate that the fort was here. That is the Starved Rock Lock and Dam. The Starved Rock is technically a big sandstone bluff on the river. It would have been a good high defensive position. So this is where the French explorer René Robert Cavalier de La Salle decided to erect one of his first fortifications. The views from up here are pretty magnificent. There is also a legend associated with this rock that is probably untrue. The fable goes that after the Ottawa War Chief Pontiac was murdered by an Illinois Indian in 1769, the Ottawa and allied Potawatomi chased the Illinois tribe to the top of Starved Rock, where they were sieged and all killed, resulting in the extinction of the Illinois tribe. However, there is no archaeological evidence to suggest that such a massacre took place here. Up here atop Starved Rock, there is a monument to soldiers of the American Revolution and the War of Off in the distance, you can see the historic Starved Rock Lodge. Well, the Starved Rock is pretty neat. Now I'm going to continue hiking along the river to find some more overlooks. This is the Lover's Leap Overlook. Not sure if there's some Lover's Leap legend associated to this spot. That is the Starved Rock. It is covered by greenery. And that's the historic sandstone bluff that a French fort once stood atop. The Illinois River was really shallow through here and not terribly navigable. So the Illinois and Michigan Canal was built in 1848 alongside the river to connect the navigable part of the river further west to Lake Michigan. You can see where the canal is alongside the river. The Starved Rock Lock and Dam is part of that canal system. It has seven locks for boats to pass up or down. This is the Eagle Cliff Overlook. There's gonna be some great views from this one.
Now I'm gonna climb up a lot of stairs to get to the Starved Rock Lodge. Up here by the lodge, there's a statue of a Native American on a horse holding up a bison skull. That's cool. And check out the views from the lodge. Pretty amazing. This is the front of the original section of the Starved Rock Lodge. It is an authentic historic state park rustic style lodge, and it was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Here's a plaque honoring the men who worked on this wonderful structure. This original part of the lodge, which includes the lobby and dining room, was started in 1933 and cost $200,000 to build. I don't believe there were any rooms originally connected to the lodge, there were instead outlying cabins, some are still standing. It's a beautiful and very large room. The Civilian Conservation Corps certainly built some high quality buildings, unlike anything that would be built today. There's a taxidermy bison head, and I like that moose wearing a top hat. There is a display case containing some old pamphlets and souvenirs of Starved Rock State Park, which was established way back in 1911. There's a vintage hat and headdress, along with some plates. I do always like some old fashioned souvenir plates. Those are some souvenir photograph books. This is what the dining room looks like. Also, there are some Winnebago bonnets. Again, here's the lovely back porch of the lodge facing the rock and the river. The original lodge has been added upon. I bet this is a really nice place to stay. Also, I noticed there is a Peter Toth giant Indian head here. Peter Toth carves these long and thin heads of Native Americans. They're called Whispering Giants, and I believe he has at least one in every state. This one is Chief Walks with the Wind. And here are some of the original cabins. That shelter looks like it was built by the CCC. Looks like this white oak died and animals were carved into it. There are a lot of carvings and other art pieces surrounding the lodge. It's a nice touch. Before going to St. Louis Canyon, I'm making a lunch stop just a few miles away from the park in Oglesby, Illinois at the root beer stand. This appears to be an old A&W drive-in, but now it's an independent old school drive-in. I love these places. The main reason I stopped is because of this guy. Out front they have an authentic Papa Burger. Papa Burger was part of the A&W Burger family, which debuted as their mascots in 1960, and they were correlating namesake burger meals as well. These 1960s Burger Family statues are pretty rare to find nowadays. I have never actually seen one before, so I'm very excited to find a Papa Burger. Though there are also Mama Burgers, Teen Burgers, and others out there. Papa Burger is holding a burger and a root beer mug. This is an authentic drive-in complete with the speaker system, which is always fun. There is some seating inside, where they have this jukebox. And the food is pretty good. If you visit Starve Rock, the root beer stand is a good lunch break option. Now I have driven back to the park, and parked in a little lot away from the main section of the park, 
to take the shorter St. Louis Canyon Trail. I wanted to do this one because there is an awesome waterfall at the end. Look at that massive rock formation. I think the waterfall is close by. And there it is hidden in this alcove, the St. Louis Canyon Falls. That is a majestic sight. There are some little crevices within the stone to crawl around in. Yeah, definitely make sure to do the St. Louis Canyon Trail. So that was Starved Rock State Park. It is awesome, and I certainly didn't see everything, so I will be coming back. I would highly recommend visiting this state park. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Also take a look at my other videos featuring state and national parks across the country along with museums, roadside attractions, and more. Thanks for watching.